I'm super excited to, to be the moderator for today's breakout session, the Inventory Processes for the Pros, where we will go over all things inventory management and how to do it in an efficient and affordable way. Just a few things to expect. We will be asking questions to all of our panelists, as well as going into a few live demos on how they work with their inventory. Today, we are with our three pros, Tanya at Tanya Lynette, full-time posher and Twitch streamer, Tori girly, at Girly Girl Style, full-time instructional designer, long-time reseller, and YouTuber, and Pamela, Scooter Renee, a mother who works and attends school full-time and aspiring entrepreneur. Let's give a hand round of applause for these ladies for being here today. Jumping right in, since you all are inventory pros with over 9,000 listings combined, which is no small feat, by the way, can you tell me how each of you got your start on Poshmark? Well, I was, am I working good? Please hear me? Okay. Um, so I had been working full time in the fashion industry. Um, I worked for Everett Shoes. And when I switched jobs, I had 200 pairs of shoes because I was a sample size. Had to downgrade my apartment, and I was like, all right, these shoes are not going to fit. What do I do? And so I started um, selling you know, on different platforms. And I actually went to school with Amanda Weiss. And she kept talking about Poshmark. She just started this job. I was like, all right, you know, I'll check it out. You know, she's, she has a great you know, uh, sense of fashion. And I got on there, and I was just blown away by the community and how well my items were selling. So I was like, oh my god. like. This is awesome. I think I might do this to start, you know, raising funds to start my own business. Little did I know it was going to turn into what it has today. Um, and so I've just been so happy selling and meeting so many different people. And I've been full time on Poshmark for six years now. I quit my full time job, you know, after I started making exactly what I was making, um, working full time. And I was like, you know, I don't have kids and I'm mortgaged. Might will just go for it, have one shot at life. Let's just make the mistakes now and, you know, hopefully I don't move back in with my mom. <laughs> awesome. And I um, actually have been reselling at brick and mortar stores for about 25 years. So I did that for a very long time. Um, I managed a few buy, sell, trade stores. And um, one of the things that I found is I have a lot of inventory. So I'm a bargain shopper, and I would buy things with the intention to wear them and then sell them. And then I found Poshmark as a way, because in Seattle, which is where I was until recently, um, uh, yeah, Seattle now. Uh, so one of the things I found was, since I wasn't driving very much, it was harder to get to those brick and mortar locations. And so I started selling on Poshmark. And I was blown away right away by the community. Just like Tanya said, it was, you know, enveloped me, and I had some great sales right away. Uh, so I was just really pulled into it. I have about 1,400 sales to date, and I am a part-time posher. I've been on about a year and a half. And my journey actually took another turn because my husband started Poshmark full-time as well. So we get to share the Poshmark love together. Uh, and so that's kind of the journey with Poshmark. And then for me, I, I've managed the stores. I've been there for a couple of years. But the big thing was, is I have a very crazy shopping addiction, so I love to <laughs> And so I'd actually downloaded the Poshmark app back in 2014, but really didn't give it a second thought. And then 2017, I decided I really need to make some money to support the shopping addiction. <laughs> so I was hiding from my husband. <laughs> so got that paid off. Uh, fell in love with Poshmark, fell in love with the community, uh, mainly the simplicity that Poshmark has to list the items. And so that's how my journey got started. Awesome. Next question. How would each of you describe inventory management? And can you go briefly into your own inventory management style? And when and why you started? Kama, I know you have a memorable Sherry story to share. Yeah, so the reason why I got started with the inventory management system was I had two pairs of identical navy blue pants. The only difference was one had a cut at the bottom and one didn't. I shipped out the first pair of pants, didn't know I shipped out the real pair, and then when it came to that second order, it had the cuffs in the picture, and I looked at the pants I had, and I was like, wait a minute, this isn't even the pair of pants that's in the picture. So I took a chance, went ahead and shipped it, and neither person said anything. <laughs> I needed to have some sort of process because for me that was very embarrassing. So 
over on the slide, uh, this is my studio where I take my pictures and everything with my mannequin and my lighting kit. My husband is the one that came up with the great idea, so if you're trying to have space um, to take your pictures, he put a curtain rod above the closet doors there, so I have access to my closet, but I have my white backdrop at the same time. <laughs> the second is my shipping station. This is where I have my heat and seal when I go get ready to ship my packages out with my ribbon, my personalized postcards. And then the very top picture is my inventory spreadsheet that I keep up with. It's just down on Excel. And then on the very bottom is just some supplies that I keep handy for when I am getting ready to ship up my items. That is organization. Okay. Uh, so for me, uh, my style of inventory management is to keep it very simple, very time efficient. I like to make sure that I can actually just get all my stuff organized so that as soon as I ship it, I can get back out there, you know, and source more inventory. Um, one of the things that I like to do is like help with their bins set up, um, poly bag thing. What made me want to actually organize stuff is when I started getting to like over 100 listings. 20 listing, 20 listings, I was like, oh, okay, I can put in one bin. And then when it started growing and growing, and then I started finding the dollar cells, like it just became piles all over the entire house. Every room except for one bathroom out of 2.5 bathrooms had Poshmark stuff in it. <laughs> and so when it was the holiday season, I was just like, you know what, I just need to just stop and just sit there and go through everything and find my system because this is not, you know, I'm not wasting, I'm wasting too much of my time right now just looking for an item. I need to ship quicker instead of pulling all of my t-shirts in one bin and now I have to go through, unfold it, find it, and now, you know, get ready for shipping. That was taking way too long. And ever since I got this system down, I ship so much faster to where I'm done, you know, within an hour shipping, you know, 20 listings, and now I can go out there and source my inventory. Awesome, Tori. And so for me, I'm a really organized person in general because I'm so ADD, I have to be organized in everything else in my life. So for me, inventory management was something that I started from the beginning. Um, also, I was in a very small space, and so many of you out here probably have a small space, just like we heard from Tanya, where you start to see that your inventory starts to creep into different areas of your house. So for me, it was a matter of getting it organized from the beginning. Um, we recently moved to a, a two-bedroom apartment, and so what I've done is, in the small space, created just a very nice, um, aesthetically appealing spot for inventory because the other thing is, if, even if you're gonna let it run around your house, it can still look pretty and it doesn't have to look like you're in a thrift store, right? So that was one of the things that I did with my um, system. So I have everything in the bins that you can see up here. They're the cute little fabric bins. You can get them anywhere pretty cheap. Uh, and then also having a shipping station pretty close by. All of this is part of that inventory system to make it fast. And then having shoes organized um, is another thing as well. And then also in our apartment, one of the things that I did is created a photo studio. With that, and that's not really part of inventory management, except when you are doing things, streamlining things to make the process easier. And then having everything very centrally located. Um, one of the things with the cubes I'll say is that started off with 20 items. So when I was starting, there was just a few different pieces, but I had the intention to scale. And many of you are probably in the same situation where you may start with a smaller amount. How do you continue to grow your business when you get to those thousand pieces or so? So the cubes work really, really well because you can scale that, but then also you can go into the bigger plastic bins. And then I do use a numbering system as well with the bin numbers. And then my spreadsheet. So I'm going to go back to the spreadsheet. We'll talk about the spreadsheet. We're going to talk about the spreadsheet. Yeah, Tori is a big fan of using all things spreadsheets and data, so you'll hear more from her later. Um, thanks for sharing a little bit about your inventory process styles. Now that we are more familiar with each of you, um, with how you go about working with your inventory, we'd love to dive a little deeper into why inventory management is important to scale your business and getting those five stars rating we all love and want. Tori, you mentioned you started tracking from day one of your business. Can you start us off? Yes, and so, I'm sorry, one more time for the question. We'd love to dive a little deeper um, as to why inventory management is important to scale your business and getting those five-star ratings we all love and want. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, with the scalability. So starting from day one, making sure that you're tracking everything, make sure that you don't make any of those mistakes and that you're also able to add those inventory pieces. 
So I am currently at, um, I've scaled my inventory down, but I've been able to really keep track of everything um, from day one and not make very many mistakes. No, it's perfect. Um, another great reason to make sure that you actually have like some kind of system, even if it's small, even if it's two bins, even if it's just hanging things up in one single closet, it's going to be a lot easier to locate. So if your customers have questions on something, you know, extra measurements, extra photo, extra detailed things, you can find it a lot quicker instead of like, oh, hold on, I need to find time to actually go and look for that. You know, like you might be like, I don't have time this week. I don't know where it's at. Might be in one of these events. I think just having that time management is very important. And also, once you get into a system, you kind of get into a rhythm of your whole entire process from sourcing, photographing, detailing, everything, so that you're not going to miss something. So the customer knows exactly what they're getting. So you can get that five star. And I think for myself is because I do work full time, I do go to school full time, I do have a family life, being able to be able to get my hands on that item, get it shipped out quickly so the, the buyer is happy, I'm happy, um, but not have to dig through totes. So I used to have shirts or shirts and pants or pants and whatever. And just digging, that was just taking up too much time. And so it's just easy for me to just go and pull that bag when I'm ready to ship it or if there is a measurement question or a material type question as well. So that's why. Also, uh, my husband takes care of my inventory for me if I'm out of town. So being here at Posh Fest, any sales I make, he knows exactly where to go pull that item, what number and everything. And it just makes my process, I can actually kind of let go just a, a little. I don't want to <laughs> we all want to keep our, keep our shipping days low, right? Yeah. Yes. What is the key thing that you can't live without to manage your inventory and helping ship out your orders in a timely manner? Pamela, you are a triple threat. You go to school, you work full time, and you're a mother. How do you keep your process efficient for you? Uh, for myself, I have a Dymo printer. And again, no advertisement for Dymo, but I absolutely love my Dymo printer. It makes my life easy. I just print the label, slap it on the package, and just go out the door. Um, and then using the priority mailing that you can get from you, the post office for free, not having to pay for those supplies or anything. Uh, those are two big things. And then also just the way I have my inventory in the totes or in the number system. So. Yeah, I would definitely say Dymo as well. Does anyone here have the Dymo? Yeah. Who's thinking about getting that? Do it. Everybody. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Yeah, it was game changer. You know, I was doing the paper printout, and then I would fold it. You know, when I was still working part time, and I wasn't trying to spend any money. Like I, one of the tips that I love giving people is to not spend any money. Like to start with what you have, whether that's your closet or your inventory setup. You know, using the Christmas bins, using the cubes, like. Tori, just start with what you have, even if it's just your sandwich bags to like put stuff in, like Christmas tissue paper, anything you have in the house. I originally started putting my clothes in a sandwich bags, you know, like I didn't want to spend any money. So I started just with the paper, like everyone here, and I would, you know, do the tape. It took a long time. I was even trying to save money to like, once I got down to a little bit, I would like strip the big pieces, of, you know, just to get that label on there. But once I got the dyno printer, like five years later, like everything just sped up for me. You know, like it took me less than a minute to ship one item. And um, so it's, I just, everyone needs to have it. And there's different ways to source it. So I, I know it is more of an expensive thing, but you can find it, you know, in other places and get it for a lot cheaper. Absolutely, and I second um, having a printer, but I will say my most important asset that helps me um, with my inventory management system is my husband. He's my best tool um, because I utilize him every single day, and having an efficient system allows you to actually have other people, just like Emma mentioned, other people can pull for you, and he actually does ship all of those items, so being able to go and pull an item quickly, um, getting it out the door, making sure it's within that, we try to do a day, um, day shipping, but also I'm going to tell you one of the, the tools that really works for me is having pre-printed um, thank you cards. So if you have branding at all, and if you don't, you need to brand yourself, but make sure that you get those pre-printed cards. You can get them with great deals. I know that I think Tony mentioned this to brand, this to brand, yeah. Tony's overnight prints, but you can find these and then you just pop them on the package. They look professional. They look amazing and it saves you so much time. 
So shout out to all of our posh partners, or Tori's husband, who's also in the audience with her to us the care today. Okay, now we are going into our live demos. First we have Tanya, who would walk us through what happens after she gets notified of the cell. All right, so after we get notified of the cell, um, the way I actually have this all packaged, so we have our item here. Don't go fast if anyone's looking for this proper. <laughs> uh, you go ahead and fold it up, and we're gonna have, there's two different bags that I use. This one does not seal, which I kind of, I'm starting to prefer this in case there's something um, that someone has a question with, I can easily take it out. I just put, you know, a basic piece of tape on it. Um, then there's these, they're self-sealing, you'll just rip that off, except these sell, these seal so well that if a customer has a question or now they want another picture, I gotta rip this up. So this isn't my favorite, but I feel like it looks a little bit more professional. Um, so we'll put this item in here, right? That's in there. Okay, let's show you guys an example. So you have it in here, really easy. I put um, a numerical number on here that I actually got from Amazon. It was about, I think it's a roll of like a thousand on here. It's maybe like $10, it was very, very uh, cheap. And so you just have all these and it's all numbered on there. So in my listing, I'll put Stone Cold Fox, um, DA, I have all my, my bins numbered, DA 235. So, and the list says say Stone Cold Fox, Beige Romper, DA-235. So all I gotta go through is open this up. Sometimes I don't have um, lids on this so that I can just pull it out. That saves me another 20 seconds. And just look for the number, slip in my thank you card, and put it in, in the uh, envelope. If I feel like being a little fancy, you know, if it was over $10 purchase, I'll wrap it in tissue paper. You know, if it's under ten dollars, again, I'm trying to keep my costs down, so I'm you know gonna get tissue paper. <laughs> but you can thank you card, and it's still gonna write, you know, safely to the customer. And you also mentioned that um, your process has cut down your processing time overall. Yes, it, because things were not in individual bins like this, mm -hmm. it wasn't easy to sort. You know, things were folded on top of each other. This way, all of the numbers are on the very top, and if you guys do want to look at this afterwards, I can just show you guys real quick. And you're just sorting through the numbers. All the numbers are very easy to read. If, again, like I say, cost efficient, if you don't want to buy the stickers, just write a number on there. Have an Excel sheet, have your notebook, and just keep track of the numbers and just hand write it on there. You know, just get a pen, paper, just keep track of it that way. Awesome, great tips. On to the next demo. Pamela, I know you have a specific way with packaging your items. Can you walk us through that? We all know that personalization can go a long way in giving your buyers a memorable buying experience and hopefully getting those five star ratings. Is there anything you do to distinguish yourself from other sellers? The very first thing I do to distinguish myself from other sellers is I have my own personalized thank you cards. It just simply says thank you for your items or items that you purchased. And then also have a sticker that I put on my bag as I ship my items. So they're seeing my name and my logo. And so it's a girl on a scooter and the reason why is my dad nicknamed Nate, ooh, got my tongue tied here. Nicknamed me Scooter and my middle name is Renee. So I put two and two together and came up with Scooter Renee because nobody's ever going to have that name. So, <laughs> but basically what I do when I get ready to ship my item is I go and I pull my item out of my tote. I use the gallon bags because I just reuse these over and over and over again. Again, I'm trying to talk about putting money back in my pocket so I can shop more. <laughs> and so for me, this works uh, well for me. So I just take the item out of the bag and then I'll put it in the plastic my bread bag that looks like this. But then what I'll do is once I put it in the bag is I'll take the bread bag with the item in it and I have a heat and seal and so I seal my item in the bag. And typically, it can take about three to four seconds. Uh, Ten, just depends on however you want to seal it. So then once I do that, the item comes out looking like this. And then I have to wrap it up in the tissue paper that has my uh, postcard on it. And it's got the Stay Posh sticker on here as well. So still kind of keeping it posh savvy. So I tie it with the ribbon, and then I just ship it in a poly mailer. And typically it's a Poshmark uh, mailer that I ship it in. 
and then I just take a label from my Dymo printer and <laughs> seal it and then just slap it on there and then it's ready to go out the door. Awesome, I love it. It's like giving yourself a little bit of, of yourself each time you're shipping out a package to your customer. Next demo. Tori, you mentioned you love spreadsheets and data. Can you walk us through what you track and why? Also, how has it helped you stay organized and scale your business? Absolutely. So number one, we hear love spreadsheets. We're all best friends. Excellent, excellent. So my husband does not, and he's not allowed to touch my spreadsheet. <laughs> so this here, um, so you're going to see what I do. This is a very simple inventory management system. You can use it in any program. I use numbers because I'm a math girl, and I like everything in the cloud to be able to access it super simply. Um, so what I do is I actually break it down into three different sections just to make it really user friendly. The first section is step one when I'm listing. So I do this at the same time as listing. So when I go to Posh, I list, I copy and paste the title, or uh, sorry, the listing description. I like to put, or go back, the title, yes. So I have the category, right here. Um, so I have the category first, and I actually, I'll show you something I do in just a second, but I always put the category, I put the brand, and then I put the listing title, which is where I copy and paste from. And then I put the listing date. So I think it's important to track all of those pieces. Um, I also have a lot of data analytics that I pull from this, but that's not, you know, you don't have to have that. It can be very simple, and you can even do it in just a notebook. And I know, Tanya, you actually keep track in a notebook as well. Yeah, because the computer, you know, has a mind of its own. It will crash and burn you one day, and you don't want to be yeah, able to that. Yeah, computer, I love my computer. Um, but I totally hear you. And so you can have whatever works for you, but just that first section there. And then one of the ways that I save time, because as we talked about time is money, is that first category, since we know that Posh has all the same categories, Slide. You'll see I created a drop down list actually um, in the spreadsheet so that when you are, or when I'm listing really quickly, all I have to do is choose the drop down and then select whatever the, the category is. Maybe it'll show up. And it's super simple. And you can do this in most um, different spreadsheets that you have. So that's step one. That's the listing process. Again, it takes very, very little time because you're already listing and then copying and pasting on the sheet itself. Then step two. Step two is after you've processed the item. So this is after, like we saw with Tanya, um, at this point we have our item put into our plastic bin. We have our number because I use a very similar system to, to these amazing ladies here and I use the numbers on there. Each of my items has an individual number. It's never reused and it's kind of like a skew, right? So if you go into a store, um, you're not going to have the same skew for a pant and a shirt. They're always going to be different. So I don't want to use those numbers, um, and then I, that first column is going to be the bin number and also the inventory number. So you have those, anyone in this room can go into my you know, room right now and pull the item in like five seconds. Like you would be able to do it, anyone can do it. So that's after the item has already been processed and put away. And then we have step three, and this is the part we're all happy about, we made a sale, woohoo! We're making money. So once you make money, you also want to make sure that you are processing this and you're tracking this. So with this third step here, I also keep track of the order date. So now I know when it was placed, when it um, uh, when it sold, so I can track the sell-through rate, which is really important for me. And then all of that, there's other data in here too, but it feeds into my uh, more of the analytics sheet. So what you're really looking for is just how do you manage the inventory, Keep track of your bins, keep track of your titles, what the item is, and then you can do it pretty easily. Well, in my mind, easily, right? <laughs> and your cost in selling, you know, because that's also the, if someone makes you an offer, you want to be able to use these sheets to be like, okay, how much should I pay for that again? You know, and then you'd be like, okay, $3, or I can sell it for X amount of money and still make sure I get my money back. Exactly, and that's a great point. You can customize these to whatever works for you because I don't keep track in mind of my cost of goods because I'm a bins girl. So for me, I don't really need to keep track of what my cost of goods really are, but there are situations where it's really important. So you can customize it for sure. Great tips. Um, for anyone here who is thinking of growing their inventory alongside their business, do you have any tips for, for sellers who initially started off with a small number of listings? and is thinking of moving towards managing over a thousand listings. What would make doing that a little less intimidating? A little less intimidating. I would say start with what you feel you're struggling with, whether it is just organizing, um, locating, uh, you know, just packaging. Think of what you want to focus on the most and put what money you have available towards that. 
So for me, it was just finding the items, you know, because putting everything, all the t-shirts in one bin wasn't working out when I was having way too many t-shirts. So I realized, okay, it's separating things and not necessarily by category. So just kind of like narrow in on that. Don't feel intimidated. Don't feel like I got to catch up with so-and-so on Instagram and their whole graph, like just do you. Okay, just do you, boo-boo, just do you. <laughs> don't, don't get intimidated by anything. You know, we're all here together. You can even ask those people on Instagram, you know, what you need help with. Great tips. Um, what advice would you give someone who's looking for affordable ways to organize their inventory and maximize their space? Tori, you recently moved to a two-bedroom apartment. Can you tell us how you find ways to maximize your space and organize over a thousand pieces of merchandise? Yes, yeah, so it, like I mentioned before with the cubes, and again, you don't have to use cubes, you can use what works best for you, but for me, because it's going to be visually appealing um, and they don't cost very much, it's a really great way to keep track of many different pieces. And so those cubes that I have, I actually have a number of them. Um, actually, I did have them, but we moved and then they kind of broke and moved. So now I'm, I get to shop for more furniture, it's okay. Um, so but it's a great way to just continue to scale and really making sure that um, you have a space for everything and it's not taking over the whole house. Awesome. Tori? Tanya? Um, I would say, like, I tell people to start with thrift stores. You know, we're already going there anyway, so just look in different departments and try to find out, um, hey, I could use, you know, that cube. I can use the clear bands. People are going to start donating clear bands, you know. Um, it, I know Tori has found uh, labels for her printer there. You never know what you're going to find. I found, like, thousands of pieces of tissue paper, you know, and I've been using tissue paper for a year. It hasn't run out yet. You know why? Because I don't give ten dollars. <laughs> there is ways to just kind of like really expand and really spread your dollars so you're maximizing profits. Like if you guys are trying to be a business and you're gonna learn so many tips here at Poshfest, expanding your dollar is the key. So don't spend a lot of money. Don't spend money where you need to. Oh. Pamela. I know for myself, just kind of going off with the <coughs> tissue paper, I like to take the tissue paper from all the birthday parties that I take for my children to and family. Whenever we have Christmas, they're like, here, you want the tissue paper? <laughs> of course I do, it's free. Um, but I also uh, just used some shelves that were out in the garage. My husband will take that, I took them from him. Um, <laughs> so I have shelving in my office. I, have, I keep everything in one room I can, have it all over the house. So I have shelving. I have the 32 quart um, totes that I use. I know I can get 20 of those baggies in a tote. I only buy as many totes as I need. I don't go out there and go crazy and buy a whole bunch of them. Um, and then also uh, using the white blackout curtain that's over my closet door. Uh, that saved me from having to go out and buy a backdrop to take my photos with. So. Also, I would add, um you guys all know you can order shipping supplies from the U.S. Postal, right? Okay, and you can order online, so they'll deliver it to you. You don't have to go in there, get the supplies, come back, ship it, or stand there and ship it in the post office. You know, oh, I don't have any more tape. Oh, they can charge for the tape. You don't have to do all that. Everything comes to you, and then if you have a busy day, you can actually schedule pickups, too. So now that's saving money on gas. You guys in California, you know that gas is crazy, or New York. So there's all these, there's a lot of things you guys can do to maximize profits in, in so many different ways. But order that. Um, one thing I did forget to mention is if you guys are shipping shoes or purses, I put, uh, I prepackage all of those in the priority mail boxes. And I still do the same system with the numbering them. And then I'll just write maybe like the brand or a quick little tiny description on there so that once that item sells, I'll just scratch it out. So, you know, they're not gonna know what's in there. And then just put the label on top of that. That's another way just to kind of maximize your time. I love all those tips. And before we end, I wanted to finish off with what's your favorite thing you purchase on Poshmark and why? Oh, I'll start. Um, so my whole outfit, by the way, I tried to shop from Posh for like all my outfits. So right now my favorite purchase is this little adorable purse, if you see this around. Um, and this was an offer to Lyfer, by the way. So she accepted my offer and I was very pleased. Um, anyway, so this is my favorite purchase. You got that for $10, right? I did. Yeah, so still. Yeah, so no tissue paper. Right. And mine would have to be my red boots I have on uh, mine was a Christian Louis Vuitton wedge. I had been eyeing this thing for like what felt like two years, but I wasn't sure what size I was going to be in that brand. I never owned it before. 
and I just kind of watched it and I was like, all right, maybe, I don't know, the price, I don't know, it's still so much. And one day she put it under $100 and I just swooped in and got it for like 80 bucks. It doesn't necessarily fit me that well, but for the <laughs>